What's up guys, my name is Brandon and iOS 14.2.1 and iOS 14.3 are currently the latest public and beta versions out right now. And as I normally do here on the channel, I wanted to take a look at both versions and discuss how they have been running for me so far. We're also going to be discussing what iOS version is coming next, a possible new Apple product launch before 2021, and more. All right, so before we talk about iOS 14.3 beta 2, let's discuss the latest public release, which is iOS 14.2.1. Now, this was only released for the iPhone 12s, so the iPhone 12, iPhone 12 mini, Pro and Pro Max, and that's simply due to the amount of issues going on with these devices specifically. There were not major issues with other devices, at least not that Apple has been able to fix yet, so that's why they pushed this update out just for iPhone 12 users. And there were major issues, especially with the iPhone 12 mini, and I talked about these you know, on Twitter. I also talked about these in my unboxing video as well. And there were major issues on the iPhone 12 mini specifically with touch responsiveness. So both on the lock screen and also for me, when I went into the control center, I would simply not be able to go home. I would not be able to swipe up from this bottom bar, you know, pretty much 90% of the time to get back to the home screen. It was very bad. It was very buggy on my device. And that was without a screen protector or a case. So a lot of people reported this issue was only if you had a screen protector and a case but I didn't have either. So I don't think that was the reason. I think there was just some kind of bug in the code that for some reason the touch responsiveness just was not there all the way, especially when swiping up from the bottom bar. So thankfully 14.2.1 did fix that. Now you will have no more issues with touch responsiveness, at least on the 12 mini here. Now there was also a fix for the MMS text messages. So basically when you texted somebody, especially in a group chat with an Android, so like green messages, Sometimes your messages just simply would not be delivered and the other people would not see your messages. So that's been fixed in 14.2.1. And a lot of people thought that this meant that the text message notification bug was fixed as well. But I can confirm that 14.2.1 did not fix the text message notification bug. So this has been going on for quite a while now. I've covered it here on my channel a lot. And unfortunately, we still do not have a fix for that. And of course, it's not just the iPhone 12s. It's all devices being affected by this bug. So basically what it is, if you don't know, basically when you get a text message, sometimes you will just simply not receive a notification that you got a text message. So you won't get a sound, you won't get a vibration, you won't get anything on your lock screen. And sometimes if you go into messages, if the person that contacted you and you didn't get the notification for is in your pinned conversations, you won't even get a notification inside of the messages application. Sometimes that just happened to me the other day. So extremely annoying bug. And a lot of people are having this. A lot of people in my comments have talked about it. a lot of people on social media. So that unfortunately has still not been fixed in 14.2.1. And I can also confirm that it has not been fixed in the 14.3 beta. So we will have to wait, you know, even longer for that to be fixed from Apple. But that is one thing we are all anticipating a fix for. Now, also the green and yellow tint issue that some iPhone 12s are experiencing has not been addressed in 14.2.1. Now, this fix could come later on, just like last year's display bug. It seems like every year there's an issue with the displays and that it gets resolved via software. So it's never a hardware issue. At least usually it's not a hardware issue. So I would expect a software fix to come for the green and yellow tint issue that some iPhone 12 users are experiencing. However, if you are having that, you could probably go ahead and just return it to Apple and get a new one. I'm sure they would replace that for you with no hesitation, especially if it's within the 14 day period, or if you bought it just recently, you have until January. So I would just go ahead and pick up a new iPhone if I were you. But as far as the performance and the battery life go in 14.2.1, they are identical to 14.2. I have not noticed any increase in performance or battery life or decrease in either of those. So I would not expect any difference in 14.2.1 and either battery life or performance just simply update if you are having issues on the iphone 12 and even if you didn't have any issues you may as well go ahead and update to 14.2.1 just because you those could come up you know later down the road if you do have an iphone 12. so anyways that's it for 14.2.1 now let's discuss ios 14.3 beta 2. So we are currently on the second beta for iOS 14.3. And this update is going to be a pretty major one once it gets released to the public. And that's for a few reasons. So number one, there's a pretty big change to the way that we customize our home screen. So as you guys know, with iOS 14, one of the biggest features was that you can customize your app icons on the home screen using Siri shortcuts. Well, now if you create a custom icon on your springboard and you go to click on it, you will notice that it opens up the application right away. It does not redirect to the shortcuts application and then take you to the you know app like YouTube. It just goes straight into it. Now you do get that pop-up up there, but that's way better than redirecting to shortcuts and then going to the application. 
So that was extremely annoying. And even if you go into the app switch right here, you will see that it shows YouTube and it doesn't show like shortcuts was, you know, opening up that application. So Apple has fixed that. That is huge for a lot of people who customize, you know, their home screen with those custom icons. This is going to make everything flow a lot better than it did on previous versions of iOS 14. Now, another big fix in iOS 14.3 that I just noticed today is that we no longer have the big gap here for HomeKit devices inside of the control center. So you guys know if you go into your settings and then go to control center and you have show home controls turned on, you will get like your home pods and your home kit devices right there and previously and you can actually see here on 14.2.1 you had all these blank spaces down below it and now with 14.3 you can see it's condensed and we no longer have those blank spaces which looked extremely ugly and just completely you know bugged out and it was like that ever since ios 14.0 so thankfully apple has finally fixed that and you can see here it only shows two of my home pods but if i go into home right here you can see all of the home pods right there so thankfully that has been adjusted here in the second beta of ios 14.3 and that's going to be a big fix when it gets released to the public as well because i know a lot of people have been complaining about that now one of the headlining features that apple talked about at the worldwide developers conference earlier this year for ios 14 was app clips so this is basically where you can you know utilize an application without fully downloading it and now in ios 14.3 finally they are enabled so you can now actually download app clips and you know see them on your device you can see here i have an example for the game phoenix 2 and if you take a look up top we have this pop-up now that shows up where it says play and you don't have to download the full application to actually play this game so if we go ahead and tap on play right there take a look at this so you get this pop-up right here which is new and this is an app clip so if you go ahead and press on play take a look at what happens we go right into the game like no loading or anything it just goes right in so that is an app clip and i really love this i think this is going to be huge for a lot of applications especially like things maybe like uber or you know renting bikes and things like that something that you only need to download possibly once every blue moon that is going to be great for those type of applications now also if you go into the app library and then go to the search right here you will notice on the bottom right where the letters are that we have a new icon for app clips so app clips have their own category here inside of the app library and you can see all of the app clips right there now we also get this splash screen in ios 14.3 i know we've seen this before i've showed this here on the channel before as well but this is definitely hinting at air tags coming very very soon so this was in ios 14.3 beta 1 and beta 2 and this is the splash screen you'll see inside of the find my application when air tags finally launch and you go to pair an air tag to your device so we should be seeing those released sometime soon possibly this year but if not this year then early next year probably around march possibly even earlier than that so we'll see of course i will keep you up to date on air tags and everything else apple related here on the channel as you know now i also wanted to talk about the new pro raw feature coming for the iphone 12 pro and iphone 12 pro max in ios 14.3 and in my initial video, when I first talked about this feature, I said that it would be great to pass off to Photoshop to edit and manipulate the photo, but actually the default built-in editor here, when you go to photos and edit, you can actually customize this a lot more than you could with a non pro raw image, a non raw image. Now you don't get any additional toggles on here. You don't get anything special down here. That's not on other phones, but you'll notice when editing these photos, that the effects are a lot more apparent and also you retain a lot more information for just an overall much better quality image because you can really manipulate it to look exactly how you'd like so this is a great feature it works really really well even with the built-in editor it does work great in photoshop as well but it works really great even just with the built-in photo editor right here so that is one thing to note and i would definitely recommend shooting raw if you're shooting like a really important photo if you want something that's going to be really good quality i would definitely recommend shooting it raw so really great feature there i'm going to love that when it comes out to the public and i think a lot of people with the pro and pro max will as well so the 14.3 betas have been pretty good so far however there are bugs of course it is a beta there's always going to be bugs and there's a couple of them that i've noticed a lot throughout the beta stages so number one is going to be airpods disconnecting so this is something I've read about for quite a while. A lot of people have commented on my videos saying they've had this, you know, in previous versions of iOS, but I never got this until iOS 14.3. So they would disconnect sometimes. And also the auto switching to other devices would be really annoying because sometimes my AirPods would switch to a device that wasn't even playing audio or it was playing audio. And then I paused and then the music would not resume back on my main device that I was listening to in the first place. So seems to be really bugged out and just really annoying with both disconnecting and also with the auto switch feature 
both of those seem to be just kind of off in iOS 14.3. So hopefully we do see a fix before the final version is released. Now, speaking of sounds, we also have an issue with the notification sounds. So notification alerts are sometimes loud, you know, when I get a notification and sometimes they're quiet. So there really seems to be some weird thing going on with notification sounds. It doesn't happen for phone calls, but only with notification sounds. Some alerts will be really loud. Others will be really quiet and almost non-existent. So not sure what's going on there. And I do also have the issue still that remains from 14.2, where my volume will just turn down sometimes automatically just by itself, like a ghost did it. And it happens, especially in my car. I would notice that a lot. So I didn't notice it anywhere else besides the car. So it seems to be something over Bluetooth but that has still not been solved here in 14.3. It just happened to me yesterday. And then, like I mentioned earlier, the text message notification bug is still not fixed. And speaking of the messages, we also do not have a fix for the laggy keyboard. So the keyboard does appear to still lag a little bit in iOS 14.3, like it has in previous versions. It happens basically when you go into the messages application and start trying to type right away, there is a little bit of a delay there, and a little bit of lag. So unfortunately, that's still not been fixed. Hopefully it will be fixed when the final version comes out though. But as far as the performance and battery life, performance seems the same as iOS 14.2 and 14.2.1. Although it did score higher in the Geekbench scores, I really didn't notice any difference in performance. However, the battery life does seem to be a little bit better here in 14.3, even on the beta. So I'm not too sure why we have an increase in battery life, but I've noticed about a 5% increase in battery life when I look at the charts going from 14.2 specifically and 14.2.1 to 14.3 here. So battery life is really good so far on iOS 14.3. As you can see there, this doesn't really show you a lot, but I am getting great battery life on 14.3 beta two, just like I did on beta one as well. So I would expect to see pretty good battery life when the final version does get released. So now what can we expect Apple to be releasing next? So today is the 23rd and usually Apple waits until at least Tuesday to start releasing software. Tuesday is definitely a hot day where they release software a lot, Tuesday and Wednesday. Lately, it's been like Thursday as well, so you really never know. However, you have to keep in mind that Thursday is Thanksgiving. Apple is very, you know, hit or miss with releasing stuff on a holiday week. So I would not expect anything on Thursday, of course, and probably not even Wednesday. So I would say that we could get a new beta, beta three of 14.3 on the 24th. However, who knows with Apple? I mean, it is a holiday week, so they could just skip this week altogether and wait until next week, the week of the 30th into December to release iOS 14.3 beta three. Now, as for the final public release of iOS 14.3, I would expect maybe two to three more betas before that final version gets released. And the release date for that is going to depend on if we get a beta this week. So if we do get a beta this week, then we could see, you know, a 14.3 release date on maybe the eighth. So maybe the second week of December. But if we skip this week and we don't have a 14.3 beta, then we'll probably expect a beta on the week of the 14th and possibly even the 21st. So I would expect 14.3 to get released in 2020. I don't think Apple's going to wait until January to push out 14.3. But if they do, there is a possibility we get 14.2.2 sometime in December. But that's only if Apple delays or not really delays, but if they just take a while to release 14.3, we could see a 14.2.2 in the meantime to fix maybe some of the major bugs that we've been talking about here on the channel. Now, I do also want to talk about another possible Apple product launch. So just when we thought all the launches were over for this year, we may actually have something coming before 2021. And that is courtesy of Love to Dream, who is a prominent leaker who has a pretty good track record. He says, you'll get a Christmas surprise from Apple. P.S. Winter exclusive. Good for winter. So pretty cryptic tweet there. Take of it what you will. But winter, you know, maybe means something that covers your ears. So that could be indicative of possibly AirPods Studio, which are Apple's premium over ear headphones. I don't think AirTags really apply to, you know, good for winter or, you know, winter exclusive. Not really sure how that relates to the winter. So AirTags are still possible. Not really sure how it relates to winter. He may have, you know, some insight on that. But I would probably expect maybe AirPods Studio or it could just be something extremely small like you know, I don't even know what, maybe a case or maybe some accessory or something like that. So it could be something small, could be something big like AirPods Studio. We'll have to wait and see, but Leaker Love to Dream did say we should expect at least one more product from Apple 
most likely in December is when I would expect that. So anyways, guys, there you have it. That is a follow-up review on iOS 14.2.1 and iOS 14.3 beta 2. Let me know your experience with both of these softwares down in the comment section below. And of course, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and also subscribe for a lot more iOS 14 and iPhone 12 coverage. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Thank you.